Hey guys, it's Josh. I'm back with another uh, Ruby episode review. I'm sorry, this one's coming out a little bit later than usual. It's um, it's literally because like I've just been so busy, like having the hardest, some of the hardest classes I've ever taken in my life. As well as I've been, me and my friends have been playing through all the runs of Undertale. So that's been taking up most of my free time. So I haven't really had time to sit down and record this video until now. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my earbuds again which probably signifies that for you guys that I'm doing a commentary and review. Um, if you've seen the episode, you know there's way too much to simply remember off the top of my head everything that happened in the episode and discuss it and thoroughly analyze it without actually watching it. So what I'm going to do is I have my earbuds in. I'm going to go watch the episode again with commentary and then do a little bit of analysis as I'm going along as well as after it. So um, just to just give a little summary before we start, this episode was the shortest episode of the season thus far. It was it was short, sweet, got to the point, but also miserable. Like, this was the, everything in the season was building up to this. Everything in the show, for that matter, was building up to this. And this was the start, beginning of the end, sort of the collapse, the payoff. Everything just started, fell down and came crumbling down. And, and the entire, like, entire strain on the, arrow just shot off it like the strain just blew off this was it it was the blow up episode is the big one and now we have to wait two weeks until we get um the next world of remnant so i mean now we next week we get world of remnant and then we then we get an hour sense of two weeks i don't know if i can handle this wait guys we have to go steal the episode i don't know what i'm gonna do so um without further ado i'm gonna start the episode in three <coughs> Man, my voice has been crappy today. Two, one, play. Oh, Laser Team trailer. I may actually be seeing Laser Team, but I'm not sure, 100% sure yet. But I kind of hope I do. I'm worried it's going to be bad, though. That's the only thing. It might not be as good as, like, just because it's Rooster Teeth doesn't mean it necessarily needs to be good. There's a lot of Rooster Teeth content I don't necessarily like. And another thing with the opening, the opening is actually happening in the show right now after this episode. Like, the opening is what's going on right now in the show. Like, the opening wasn't just symbolic. It was, like, complete foreshadowing of the events of the episode. If you're wondering, my voice is a little scratchy. It is very cold. It is, like, in the 20s and 30s. And it's messing with my entire body. Like, I feel horrible. I don't know why. It's just, I guess I'm not used to this temperature, even though I prefer it to the heat. But yeah, this is like the stuff, like this stuff is actually what's going on right now in the show, or it's starting to go on, like, which is really awesome. I'm hoping we get to see more of Winter, because I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of sad that, I hope she isn't just a character that was like one used and then gone. Like, I'm hoping we see her. Those faces represent exactly how we felt after this episode. I assume you all can agree. See, Ozpin's definitely intent. I don't think it's because he knows about the mashup with the polarity and the um, the magnetism and stuff. But I do think he knows. I do think he knows. Like he, I think he's trying to test Pira to see if she's up for the shot. As you can see, Penny's usually preppy stuff, while Pira is very depressed. Like she's very scared about this battle. No, it's not Penny. No, it's not. So we cut back to the battle for Ruby's weaponless. But she still tries to reason them. Like, she doesn't just go try to fight them. She still tries to reason with them. So I think that the reason he's walking around not just laying low is because it doesn't matter. Like, the plan is so far advanced right now that it doesn't matter whether or not he lays low or not because... It's so far along that the plan is going to happen anyway. So even if he doesn't lay low at this point, he'll be fine. 
he won't get caught. This is so tragic knowing what's going to happen. I love how they're all happy and Jean's like so intent and Emerald is just as intent too just to see what happens. So as we can see, Pierre is doing a decent job at defending um, Penny's attacks. Yes, showtime. So he tries doing the blaster cannon to try to get past him, but Mercury is very quick. He just blam, boom, stopped her. Like, he's very quick. You know, that's Sanji and his, like, ability of kicking. Sanji from One Piece. So just a typical fight so far. Pyrrha is doing pretty well, except she's getting a little hit there. So she's getting ready to attack. The battle is still going on. So Emerald's trying to work her magic. Ruby's doing the best she can. She want, needs to warn them. She needs to stop the fight between Penny and Pyrrha. Because she knows what's going to happen. She successfully takes down Penny. Close to the end of the battle, Penny comes roaring back. Her weapon's too far back to reach. She's pretty much defenseless now unless she uses like her aura, like or part of her semblance, I mean, to that something that's not weapon related. But obviously Emerald Solutions work to literally make her literally see thousands. So she's naturally has to block them, leading them back at Penny, which destroys Penny. <sighs> it's gonna have to watch this scene again. And Penny is destroyed because Pyrrha literally did what she saw. I feel like if the plan wasn't being initiated now, I feel like the audience would be sending up with um, Ospin's students just murdering other, or insulting other players to the point of violence. And it is revealed to the world that Penny is a robot. However, I'm wondering if the illusion on Pyrrha is that she can't see that it's a robot and she thinks she just murdered a human being. And even if she didn't murder a robot, she still committed murder in her eyes. And she's just pe probably Pierre is probably just destroyed, and there we see we see Penny's creator for the first time in the show. So this is the final straw for the Grim. They feel the tension, they feel the fear, and then Ruby sees Penny and just breaks. She collapses. She's just completely distraught. It's one of the that that shot of Ruby is one of the most sad scenes in the entire thing. <laughs> Fucking that shitty grin. Fuck you, Mercury. You're a piece of shit. And as we could see, they can't kill the feed. Because the virus has kicked in. This is the final stage of the early parts of the plan. Cinder has finally succeeded. This is the beginning of the downfall. And she does an amazing monologue about, like, complete propaganda monologue and Jean is just completely flabbergasted and shocked. Bashing the huntsmen. Bashing the head monsters. <clears throat> this is when Ironwood knows these are the people they were looking for. These are the people that were here. And he knows they failed and that they're here right now and he gets really pissed off. See, see, Pyrrha is broken. She's mentally destroyed. That comment, I don't think they're going to tell the difference. Ah, oh, Weiss and Blake were bonding, but I guess they're interrupted. Yeah, and it's just like... Destroyed. And we see Zwei for the first time this season. Zwei is still there. Honestly, I 
Usman, he seems calm and collected. He he's he's a lot more powerful than we let on. Like he knows that he can like he knows that he needs to keep his cool and handle this maturely. I do think Osman is the, mo the second most powerful character behind the main villain, Emerald, and as he sneaks out. So they're watching a stream, trying to wonder what the hell is going on. But they'll grab a march from the shadows. There's too many for them to handle. But it doesn't seem like they're attacking them. They're coming for the city where the most tension is. So it doesn't really matter if the soldiers are trying to fight. She just completely destroys. So I was first watching it, so I'm like, they're safe if they're in the, um, they're safe if they're in the auditorium. But then I remember there's Flying Grim. There's a Nevermore. So this is like the level nine is probably like the highest is probably level ten. So I assume that. So I assume that level, like, this is, like, the level of a huge natural disaster, like, insanity. Like, and we see Sun and, and, Sun and Coco hanging out, which is the most least important fact about this episode, but I just love it. So, so they came for orders. I mean, they wanted to, like, try to tackle the main villain behind it all, but they said, get to the city. We need more people to defend the Grim, because the Grim are going insane. Like, the city is going to be destroyed. Like, this is, like, pretty much apocalyptic level natural disaster for that specific city. So the Nevermore is trying to get in. Best line of the episode. Ospin has no time for his shit. No, has no time for shit. He's like, you brought my arm right here and use it. I don't care. We can deal with this in our time. There's an emergency going on right now. And that's the 100% Ospin's best comic collected. That's why Osman is one of the best characters. Hold on a second. I thought someone was like here. Because I am in a classroom. And look who it is. Neo destroyed all the soldiers. And she's here to break out Torchwick with his hat. The Torchwick is finally back in the show. This makes me so happy and upset at the same time because I do not want to see the villains win in this show. It's so awesome. And then they use that to take out the other military ships, further helping the advance of the Grim. Neo's just so satisfied. Look at that grin. Look at that smirk. Here we are with... Adam, finally making his appearance as well, Liam, not in a flashback. And for somehow they captured Grimm. I don't know how they did it, but they were able to capture Grimm. And that is the end of the episode. And there's some cool art if you want to look at it. Some cool. And there's an ad for Laser Team. Okay, so. Oh, man, this episode. As you can see, shit is just going down. Everything's just it's just a catastrophe. But um, but the the final scene, Adam coming out. I do think this is the f the first time. This is when Adam and Blake are gonna be reunited. Blake is gonna see Adam for the first time since she left the White Fang. They're gonna have a fight. Obviously, it's gonna be a very emotional scene. Blake's probably gonna cry. Blake might be tempted to join them again. Actually, I don't think she will be. I think she'll be strong enough at this point with the power of her friends and Ozpin and everyone behind her. I don't think she will be tempted to um, to join the White Fire. I think she'll be powerful enough to stand her ground. She might get emotional. There might be tears involved. Adam might get emotional. We don't know. So that's going to be one of the best scenes when Adam and Blake encounter. I'll feel in next episode or episode after that. That would be amazing because we are pretty much in the final arc or final yeah final arc of the season. Like, this is, like, the next couple episodes are obviously going to be this battle, this conflict, and the aftermath of said battle and conflict, if they manage to get the aftermath in this season. Because if you think about it, that was nine, so we only have three episodes left on, including World of Remnant. But World of Remnant's, like, just such a cop I think this is the last World of Remnant of the season, so after that we'll get three, because we want to finish this on Valentine's Day weekend, which should be really cool, because I actually have a con that weekend, so it's like I'm going to go to the con 
engage in some, some Ruby fans and stuff, and then I'm going to come back and watch the finale. I'm hoping maybe they'll have a viewing room for the finale at the con itself. Because the con is actually on my university campus, so I can just hang out there all day, and it's free. So I can just hang out there literally all day. It's going to be great. But um, back to Ruby specifically. I love how Ozpin stays calm and collected throughout this entire episode. He knows everything's collapsing. He knows the villains that they were trying to track all along succeeded, but he still manages to maintain his cool. And it's like, you know what? The people need our protection. We need to do this. And speaking of Ozpin, I think he will either fight Cinder or we'll get to see him fight something or do something of his powers this volume, whether it be the next episode, episode after that, or a finale. That would be a great finale send-off or maybe episode before the finale cliffhanger, maybe where he takes out his weapon, kind of like uh, recently in One Piece with Luffy and Gear 4. That would be awesome. But I do think they strategically chose this to be the short episode of the season to literally start the madness and start every aspect of the madness and just leave you there. They wanted to dissent. They wanted to reveal. There is no more tournament. There is no more probably beacon. There's no more probably like the governments are going to cla- go into war with each other, or if they're going to bl- blame a uh, blame game is going to go around and around and around until eventually there's war. And I think that Cinder's goal is to achieve more war. So, yeah, the, like the governments are going at each other, at each other, at each other. Like, it's insanity. So, this is it. This is the final, the final game, the final, the final arc of season three. And it's just insane. This episode was phenomenal. Every episode of the season is so phenomenal. Like, we'd be falling over three as a consolidated, like, if you consolidate it as one long film, it might be, like, might be one of the best movies I've ever seen. Definitely, Ruby is definitely in my top five shows now. This season is truly, like, Ralph Trevelyan 1 and 2 was in my top 10 or 20 shows, definitely. But now it's one of my, like, favorite fictional works of all time. It's, like, 10 out of 10 by a milestone. In the beginning, it was probably 9 out of 10 at Volume 1. Volume 2 was bordering on 10, but I still think it was a 9 out of 10. Volume 3, 10 out of 10. This show is something else, and I definitely have the way Rooster Teeth is handling it. Miles and Carrie keep doing this. This is awesome, but stop being so dicks to our hearts. But anyway, that's going to be it for this review. I did my commentary, did my analysis. Um, if I forget anything, I might post a second video, like episode eight, for I mean episode nine, like further comments or further opinions, and I might post that because I feel like I might be forgetting some stuff. But if not, this is good. So thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.